In today's video, we're going to be talking about the structure of the UK CAT and what you can expect on exam day. Before you start revising for any exam, it's extremely important that you're very familiar with what exactly is going to come up in the exam. If you know it's going to come up in the exam, then you can revise specifically for those things. The UK CAT exam changes year upon year. This year, there are five main sections. Verbal reasoning, decision making, quantitative reasoning, and abstract reasoning. You also have a section on situational judgment. Given that you don't have any special educational needs, for the standard candidates you'll get 120 minutes to do the whole exam. This is including the situational judgment section. What can you expect in each of the sections? Verbal reasoning is ultimately a test of your comprehension skills. You'll need to evaluate information given to you and you'll need to be able to pick and choose the most relevant bits of information that will help you most accurately answer the question. In the exam you'll get 22 minutes to answer 44 questions. Now this amounts to about 30 seconds per question. The next section is decision making. This section is new this year. This section will test how good you are at making the most appropriate decision when you've got lots of information that you need to sort of balance out and evaluate before coming to a sound conclusion. For this section, you'll get 32 minutes to answer 29 questions. Therefore, you get just over a minute per question. Now, in this section, you do get quite a lot more time per question compared to verbal reasoning. However, there are reasons for this. Particularly, this is because you're having to stitch together a lot of information to come to a decision. Unlike in verbal reasoning, where you're simply finding the most relevant bits of information. The third section is quantitative reasoning. In summary, it's pretty much just a load of maths. However, you need to be good at finding the most relevant bits of numbers and the most relevant information that would allow you to answer the questions asked. Now, you need to be very familiar with using the online calculator for the section because the calculator is very useful when you're working with big numbers. In the exam, you do get a piece of pen and paper, so if you are good at mental calculations, you are allowed to make notes and do a few rough calculations in there. To improve using this online calculator, when you are doing UKCAT questions, maybe pull up your calculator on your computer, or you could, on the UKCAT practice website, do a few past paper questions on there, and they also have the online calculator. Also, there's a website called Medify, and on that website, when you're doing past papers, there is another online calculator. So whatever resource you use, just make sure you're familiar with using that online calculator and learn all the shortcuts there are to help you do the calculations as fast as possible. Although you want to do the questions as fast as possible, you want to ensure that you do them as accurately as possible as well. So the aim is to do questions accurately and quickly. For this section, you get 36 questions in 25 minutes. So it's approximately 30-40 seconds per question. The fourth section is abstract reasoning. And now if you did 11 plus back in the day, and you revised for non-verbal, then you'd be very familiar with these sorts of questions. To be honest, abstract reasoning is just to do with pattern recognition. So the more questions you do for this section, the better you'll get at it. Now in abstract reasoning, you'll get 55 questions in 14 minutes. Now, this section is very intense because you've got loads of questions to answer in a very short period of time. It works out to be around 20 seconds per question. Now, clearly this section is a lot more time pressure than other sections. So it's very important that when you're revising and practicing that you get good at recognizing patterns, but also signs and tips that will help you get to the correct answer as fast as possible. Now, if you do Google this, you can find many tips that will help you on abstract reasoning, including checklists to go through when you're doing these questions. And I found these checklists really useful because when you go through them, you can very quickly funnel down to the answer. Particularly in abstract reasoning, the elimination method is really useful because as soon as you know one or two of the answers aren't correct, you can cross them out. And eventually you'll have crossed three or four of them out, maybe giving you the answer or giving you two options to choose from. The last section is situational judgment. In this section, you've got 68 questions to do in 27 minutes. This works out to be just under 30 seconds per question. Now this section is actually quite straightforward if you practice well enough. Now to do well in this section, it's important that you have the mindset of a medical professional. For situational judgment, one of the things I'd recommend doing is actually reading the GMC guidelines or the document called Tomorrow's Doctors on the GMC website. Now, GMC standing for General Medical Council. Now if you read this, you actually get a lot of the answers for situational judgement because it's, it's like a guideline that the GMC expects doctors to follow when interacting with patients. So, after all these sections, everything adds up to 120 minutes. One key thing that you need to remember is, in the UK CAT, the timing for each section is only dedicated to that section. Let's say you manage to whiz through the verbal reasoning, which is meant to take you 22 minutes and 15 minutes. That extra 7 minutes, you can't actually transfer it on to another section. So what I suggest is that for each section, you use a full time given to you to really go through all the questions, make sure to flag any unsure questions you have, and really try your best to work out the answer. Make sure not to give up. 
I know it can get frustrating when there's one question that's really pissing you off, but the last thing, like I said, you should do is give up. Take a breather and give it another go. Between sections, I believe you get a small break of a minute or so, and in this minute, you can just really breathe, really relax and reset yourself for the next section. This video has summarized what the 2017 Yuki Cat exam will be structured like. So now you have a very good idea of what the exam will be structured like, it's time for you to knuckle down and get revising.